Welcome and hello. This is a video tutorial on Heck HMS. And in this lesson, I'm going to be discussing the meteorological models, specifically precipitation methods, specified hiatograph, standard project storm, and met sim precipitation. So what I have on the screen is my HMS with a watershed that's been delineated into subbasins. And I've got my meteorological model selected. Down here in the precipitation dropdown, the options I'm going to be discussing is specified hiatograph, standard project storm, and met sim precipitation. All right, if you're curious about any of the other methods here in the drop down, those are all covered in previous lessons. This is the final lesson on this uh, precipitation method topic. Right now, for precipitation method, specified hiatograph is selected. And also under basins, I do have all of the basin one subbasins included. So up here in the meteorological models, I can go ahead and click on specified hiatographs. And the options we have are to select the hiatographs directly. This method is the simplest method, I feel, because basically the user just provides HMS the hiatographs it wants to use. The whole point of these precipitation methods is to give HMS watershed parameters and expect HMS to determine and calculate the hiatographs for each subbasin. But in this case, if you're only want using, say, one precipitation gauge that covers the whole subbasin, you can go ahead and do that. Or if your hiatographs are calculated externally and you just want to give that data to HMS to use, this would be the uh, specified hiatograph method would be the one to use. So what we need to do here is provide the uh, precipitation time series data sets. Right now, I don't have any to select, but I need to for my five subbasins. So to do that, we're going to go up to components menu and then time series data set. We're going to select the precipitation gauges, which is uh, uh, the first one here. It's already selected and then new, then give it a name. I'm just going to call subbasin one and then create. Right. While I'm here, I'm going to create a few more. So I'm just going to go new one for subbasin two, create. And then let's do one final one here. New. I'm going to call this subbasin three dash five to account for subbasins three, four and five. Now I can go ahead and make that assignment. So we'll say subbasin one, subbasin two. And for subbasins three, four, and five, I'll just use this final time series data set, which is for precipitation gauge data. I, I made it this way so you can see that there's flexibility. You can have one time series data set per subbasin, or they can be grouped together. Let's go ahead and take a look at that data itself. So for time series data, if I expand the precipitation gauges directory, I can now see precipitation uh, data for subbasin one, two, three, four, and five. Let's go ahead and make some edits to subbasin one just to kind of show you uh, get you started if you haven't done this already. In the components editor, we have a number of fields to fill out, like the description, which is optional. The data source is either a manual entry or a DSS record. If we select the DSS record, we then have to specify the file name and the path name. I'm going to go back and go to manual entry, though. Next is the units and the type. It's really um, it just says units right here, but it really is units and type. So the units is going to be millimeters or inches. And then the type is going to be either incremental data or cumulative data. Let's go ahead and select incremental in inches. And then for a time interval, let's say one hour. If we expand this subbasin one precipitation gauge data, we now have our see our different time windows. And it starts us off with one default time window here, which is the first day of the year 2000. So go ahead and update that data with whichever start and end date time you want down here in the components editor. What I'm going to do is say I have data for the first three days of March 2024. So I would just enter the data like that. And then if I click on the table tab here, I should see hourly incremental precipitation data for each hour of the first three days of March 2024. So we can go ahead and type this data in or we can paste it in because remember, we selected manual entry. I'm going to go ahead and paste some data in that I had copied onto my clipboard. And this is incremental. Uh, precipitation on a one hour time step. It goes down to the final hour of that three day time period. If I click on graph here, now I can see what that data looks like visually, just to confirm that it's what I want. And here we see a spike here towards the end of day one, and then another peak in the rainfall intensity as uh, sort of between days two and three. For instance, if I change that um, units from incremental inches to cumulative inches, then 
the table data would look a little different. Now I'm going to paste in the cumulative data, which is right here. It's the exact same data that I was using before. But now when I click on graph, we see that cumulative increase uh, for a total of five inches of precipitation over the course of that three day storm. So let's go back to specified hydro graph. We have our subbasin data assigned. And then if I go up to met model options tab, I have an option here to do a total override of the storm depth. So if I say no here, then in the specified hydro graph, I just have a gauge column. There's no other columns. But if I go back to options tab and say yes to total override, then I should see a column here for total depth in inches. So right now I can specify what I want the total depth in inches to be for that subbasin during the duration of the simulation. Now, if you recall, it would the data I provided is five inches of total rainfall depth. But if they, say for some instance, I wanted to scale it down to four inches. So what would happen then is four divided by five is 80%. So it would scale every single time interval precipitation depth data. 80% of what is showing up in the time series data set. So for instance, if a, if a particular hour had 0.1 inches of rainfall, this uh, scaling factor would change it to 0 0.08 because that's 80% of 0.1. And that would occur over every time interval and it would eventually sum up to four inches instead of five. If this total depth is override is not specified or we just went up here and said uh, no, then the total depth of precipitation would simply be the sum of the precipitation for each uh, interval of the duration during the simulation. Okay, so that is it for the specified Hyedo graph method. Let's move on to the next method, which was standard project storm. So I select standard project storm up here in the watershed explorer, and then I've got two tabs. There's the standard project storm tab and the sub basins tab. So we'll talk about those now. This standard project storm method is intended to be used for watersheds within the continental United States and for watersheds east of 105 degrees longitude. It is also limited to areas between 10 square miles and 1,000 square miles. However, this method is not really commonly used anymore because of lack of probability of occurrences and due to the more recent development of other precipitation methods. So here are the parameters we need to provide here. So the first one here is inches. It's the index precipitation depth required. So let's just go ahead and type in a value, five inches of depth for our storm event. The HMS technical reference manual in this section does provide a map that I know you probably can't read and I can't either, but uh, go ahead and check that out and zoom in and it shows precipitation index, which relates to this particular method. Next up is the area. And I'm gonna type in uh, 26.3927. And this is in miles squared. This is gonna be the area of the subbasins combined or the watersheds combined. And the reason I know it's this number is because in preparation for this lesson, I went ahead and selected the subbasin. And from that metadata, I could I could get the area in miles squared, 8.0521 in the case of subbasin one. And then for subbasin two, I've got a different area that's 6.4953. And then subbasins three, four, and five as well uh, ultimately got me to this sum of 26.3927. All right, the last uh, field here is the distribution, either standard or southwest division are our two options. This distribution is a temporal distribution method and it determines how the precipitation depth is shaped um, over the high ito graph. I'm going to bring in the HMS technical reference manual here. And what we see is a standard versus Southwest for a six hour duration storm, one, two, three, four, five, and six. And what we're seeing here is 10% of the total precipitation depth occurs in the first hour for the standard method and 4% of the total precipitation depth occurs in the first hour for the Southwestern uh, division criteria method. So you can see how that distribution occurs over the six hours. Of course, both methods have a peak of 50% and 38% for Southwest and standard respectively in this fourth hour. But generally speaking, the Southwest uh, distribution peaks has a higher peak and a sort of a slower start and end, whereas the standard distribution is a little bit flatter.
This page is within the standard project storm page of descriptions in the HMS technical reference manual, which is just one page of a few, all the precipitation methods available. So instead of listing out all 11 links here, I'm just going to leave a link to this one page, and then you can click on the standard project storm right here. The other two we're discussing in this lesson is uh, specified hiatograph, and then coming up next is MetSim precipitation. So just know you have plenty of references here. Check that link out in the description. All right, back in HMS, we have the standard project storm selected. Now I'm going to go over to the subbasins tab. And what we need to provide here, it's actually optional, so we don't have to. But this transposition factor, I understand, to be used as a multiplier. Each subbasin's rainfall depth is multiplied by the transposition factor to compute the Hyedo graph for each subbasin. So I assume if it's blank, it's just multiplied by one and there's no effect. But if you want to scale up to maybe 50%, I believe you type in 1.5 or maybe 80% of original would be 0.8. The user's manual does not say anything about this factor. So I'm um, kind of just using my best guess and I would have to um, experiment with the use of exercises before giving a definitive answer about how this is exactly used. All right, well, that was uh, what I had to say about the standard project storm method. The last one is MetSim precipitation. So let's go ahead and select that. Using the MetSim precipitation method requires the basin model use a defined coordinate reference system, and all subbasins use a discretization type, which is not none. So on the map here, I have my subbasins. If I click a subbasin, it would highlight it in the Watershed Explorer and bring up the component editor data. And down here for discretization method, by default, it says none. So if I'm using this MetSim precipitation method, I need to actually select one of these discretization methods, structured, unstructured, and files specified uh, for all the subbasins. And the details about discretization method are covered in a previous lesson. Back to the MetSim precipitation method, this method interpolates a sub-daily precipitation depth at each grid cell from a daily precipitation totals. Here we have our parameters. We have a grid name, which is the precipitation data grid. I'm going to go ahead and define that real quick. So we're going to go up to the components menu, grid data manager, and then I want to select precipitation grid sets, which is this first one, new. I'll give it a name for basin one, and then I can go ahead and make that selection. In the Watershed Explorer, if I expand grid data and then precipitation grids, I can define the data for that grid right here. It's either a DSS file or multiple DSS files, uh, excuse me, records. I select the DSS file and then the path name from there. The HMS Tutorials and Guides website has a link to a number of different gridded data set sources. So uh, what you're seeing here is a table of different gridded data set sources. And I have not personally checked out all these links, so I can't vouch for which ones are better than others, but I will leave a link to this page in the description of this video as well. Back to our MetSim precipitation. The next parameter down is time shift method. The default is none, and that's what you should probably leave it as if all of your time series data set and grid data set is properly lined up with your, your simulation start time. If it's not, normalize start may be the method you want to use. Normalize start method adjusts the time of the first grid in the grid set to the start time of the simulation. And then uh, the last option here is user specified with a time shift in hours that the user needs to provide. So leaving it at, here at zero would just basically be the same as none. There's no time shift. But um, if your precipitation grid is set to the coordinated universal time UTC and your local time zone of your model is in the western hemisphere then you're going to want to use a positive shift here based on the number of time zones if all of that same thing i just said is true except your local time zone of your model is in the eastern hemisphere then you're going to want to use a negative time shift for uh, this value here temporal disaggregation is uh, bond it's the only option so that's what you're going to have to use and then the last three parameters here is storm characteristic method. And then uh, the two fields down are based on the method selected. So for fixed value, we would go ahead and provide a storm duration. I'll say it's a four hour storm. And then the time to the peak of the storm, I would say is an hour and a half, 90 minutes. If you select either 
uh, annual pattern or grid pattern. This allows the user to temporarily change that uh, storm duration and peak or grid would be spatially uh, variability in that storm duration or peak. So what that looks like is for annual pattern, we now have storm duration and uh, time to peak, and that requires a paired data set. And then for grid, it would be a gridded data set for storm duration and uh, storm time to peak. The user's manual for ver HMS version 4.12 says nothing about these last three fields, so I uh, can't provide any more information on exactly what types of uh, gridded data sets it's looking for, but um, I'm doing my best here. All right, well, that was it for this lesson. We talked about the last three precipitation methods within a meteorological model, specifically the specified hiatograph, standard project storm, and met-sim precipitation.